Hey everyone, so I know you guys have been wondering where have I been? Well, um, as I had shared with you before, I was busy working on finishing the book. The book is finally completed and it is ready. Um, I'm just fine tuning certain things now and as soon as it's available, uh, I'll let you guys know. I'll be selling it through Amazon so you'll be able to see it there. It will definitely be less than 20 bucks, okay? Um, uh, it will be called Pen and Ink Drawing. A Simple Guide. Don't let the name fool you, okay? <laughs> it is simple, but it's, I've done my best to make it as comprehensive as possible. I, I had it in mind, as I had shared with you before, that I wanted it to be a book that I would have wanted when I was learning how to draw, well, beginning to draw with pen and ink, okay? So I think you guys will be super happy with it. I think you guys will really love it. Um, it was a lot of work. I really invested myself into this because I really wanted it to, to be what I would have wanted, you know? And that's what I had in mind when I was designing this book and, and you know it's you guys will see for yourself okay so of course you guys can look forward to me maintaining now my regular schedule again as far as uploading videos and stuff like that I know you guys have missed that and yes I've been taking notes I've been listening to you guys and requesting someone I will be continuing the series the urban sketching series the watercolor series the figure drawing series the linear perspective series the portrait drawing series you guys can definitely look forward to that um, also I'll be having a couple giveaways as well um, I have uh, Secura actually sent me a couple of these I think I have around five or six or so so I'll, you can definitely be looking looking forward to me giving this away pretty soon also the um, I think I'm definitely gonna have some giveaways for the book as well um, but overall you know I just wanna say thanks so much guys for all the patience thanks for supporting me thanks for you know just let me know how I am helping you. It's been really wonderful experience, this whole, you know, providing tutorials for you guys. Everything has just been a wonderful experience so far, and I'm very thankful and very appreciative for you allowing me to kind of like, you know, share what I know with you, you know? And I really appreciate just how the feedback I've been getting from everyone. So, okay, so that's the great news I have for you guys. So now you can look forward to me, you know, maintaining the regular schedule of uploading tutorials and so on. So, all right, let's get to it. Okay, guys, so in this tutorial, I'm going to continue the urban sketching series. Now, remember in the first video, I did a, um, some, I went over some basics. Um, and then in the second video, I went over the importance of, of framing your drawing or having some sense of framing of how you want to orient the subject. Right, whether it's vertical or horizontal and so on. In the third video, I gave some tips on how to simplify the composition to basic shapes. Okay? This is important, especially when you're you know, determining how you want to design your drawing. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over some tips that will help you to create emphasis. Now, um, why is that important? Well, it makes the image a lot more uh, dynamic, you know, and it it makes it more interesting. It gives the eyes more work. It just shows that, and you're not being uh, robotic. You're not, it, it shows that there is some sense of design behind what you do. There is a creative process. You're not just rotely copying whatever is in front of you. You're actually filtering out information, you know, uh, undermining uh, information. You're highlighting or exaggerating information. There is some creative decision making that's going on. So it's like, say for example, we have these. We got some circles here, okay? And um, what I'm going to give you are just some tips. Now, if you look at this, um, it, it's this is what you'd consider to be a focal. There's no uh, particular circle that you focus on or shape that you focus on because they're about the same, okay? Now, if I do this, we have the same circles. But now, let's make one of them black. I've just created emphasis. Very simple example, yes, you know, but it's important to be aware of this. In other words, see, what I'm doing here is you're, I'm directing your attention to this. You may look at this first or you may look at this last, but the, the fact is, this is what you'll spend most time looking at, okay? And um, it's just the way it is because we're drawn to contrast. We're drawn to things that that stand out. See, and this is one of the ways of creating emphasis, and it's to use value. So, value can include um, making 
for example, everything, every, all white circles here, and this one is black. The same would work, in, you know, if we were flipped or if we inverted this whole idea where all the circles were black and this were white. Or, if we had, say for example, um, all, we have a whole bunch of circles, right? And then let's say they're all gray. And then we have one that's black. And that could also, of course, create emphasis as well because it's the only black one. But here we have grays and then we have one that's white and one that's black. So we have this contrast between the lightest value and the deepest value. And generally in drawing, I feel like this is perhaps one of the most commonly used um, way of creating contrast in that the, where there is the lightest value and the deepest value, that's where your eyes are going to go. And it creates a really dynamic contrast in a drawing. Okay, so um, it's, it's important to be aware of value, using value for creating contrast. That's perhaps one of the most common and effective and intriguing ways of creating contrast. Of course, you can use shape as well. So again, using this similar example, so we have a whole bunch of circles. And then we have one box. <laughs> All right. Of course, this is your area of contrast because your eyes will go here because it, it's contrasting with everything else. It stands up. Okay. Now, in similar, you can use um, you can use size as well. All right. Naturally, this will be your area of focus because you're gonna you're gonna be you know it stands up. It's the one big circle, a whole bunch of small circles. The one box or rectangle and everything with circles. Everything here is just, you know, pretty monotonous, okay? Um, we could use position. Well, you know, let's, how about I make them all very similar. So, of course, because this one is in the center, it will receive a lot more attention than the other ones around it because it's in the center. So position is another variable or another aspect of or element of emphasis that we can use to direct people's attention, your viewers' attention. So it's it, I think these are perhaps the um, most common. Of course, you can also use, um, which is uh, perhaps one that we do a lot without even noticing it. If you have a whole bunch of circles like this, they're all pretty uh, the same size, you know, same value, everything else. And then there's one that has more information, detail. Okay, so um, detail is definitely one that's, yeah, that's good to use. Um, here we're using size, here we're using shape, here we're using uh, position, um, here we're using um, value, contrast, putting the highest value or the, the deepest value against the lightest value, right? And here we're putting, uh, using value as well. And of course you can use color. You know, like when you see those photographs, like a black and white photograph, and there's one thing that's there that's like red, you know, that's going to be where your eyes are going to focus on. So these are different, you know, techniques um, that you can use to create emphasis in your drawing. Now, um, as I said, the main concept here is contrast. You're trying to make something stand out. Now, the thing is, though, uh, if you're drawing a scene, you won't necessarily, uh, there's an image I'm going to use. Okay, here it is. So the thing is, though, uh, you won't always uh, be able to create the composition. Like, for example, if you're designing a scene, you may uh, want to put the, you know, just like you have the whole rule of thirds and so on, you know, and they say it's it's ideal or preferable that you put your area of focus at where these, um, these intersections are, okay? Now, you may not necessarily have a scene where you have that much control where you can put things in the position where you want, or you can... Um, manipulate the size of something okay or change the shape but you can still even if you have a scene like this and I deliberately um, use this photo I took because here we have like three trees one two three now, there's another one here that's kind of like showing but these three okay now overall they're pretty much the same and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three different drawings where I create um, I make each tree the center of focus. So in other words, I will treat each one differently in order to make it the, um, the the center of our attention, okay? And it just shows you that, you know, you don't always have to just 
copy whatever is given or whatever you see just the way it is. You should actually practice um, manipulating where you direct your viewer's attention. And I think it's, you know, it's not that difficult if you get into the habit of practicing that. And what you will find is it will become, the drawing process will be a lot more enjoyable because you realize that you're really exercising, um, you know, your creative control. And you're getting involved in the creative process, you know. So what I would uh, generally suggest as a good exercise is to do a drawing. Like say for example you have a scene like this and do the same thing but manipulate a different variable in each one to create a different emphasis. So in other words, you can make this tree or this tree the the um, the focal area and make it stand out in different ways. Where, for example, one you may use value, one you may use texture or detail, one you may use um, its position, and so on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create three drawings and then have a different tree emphasized in each one. So here we have the three drawings, and as I said, I'm going to render each of them so that a different tree is emphasized in each. And it will just give you some simple ideas on how you can simplify and reduce and you know control the way you render in order to bring focus to wherever area you want. Okay. Okay, there you have it. So, just three simple examples on how you can play around with the idea or concept of creating emphasis in your drawings. Um, I basically just had three trees here and I just basically um, chose one that I would render more than the others. Okay, of course, you know, when your drawings are more complicated, you can definitely pay more attention to some of the, the elements that I discussed before in terms of detail, um, shape, and size. And some of these are more relevant to when you're creating the composition altogether. So in other words, you can move things around. Okay. So in this case, um, I just chose to use the three trees as they were and basically chose what I wanted to render or how I wanted to render it. And I think this is really excellent exercise. You can use, you know, find a scene and do like different drawings and try to find something you want to emphasize. And then use one or two of these variables and determine how you're going to create that that emphasis or focal area and it, it really enables you to tap into 
um, using or implementing more of your creative control in your image. You're not just copying what you see, but you can actually determine, you know, it, it's almost like you're telling a story and you're trying to say, okay, this is what's important in this story, or this is what's important, and so on. So, you know, just, just have fun with it. What I basically did was just um, use a different type of stroke to render the the tree of focus like here I basically just said you know what since this is close I'm gonna make it seem as if it's just a a fully solid black uh, silhouette or shape and contrast to all that's in the background here I basically just use a different type of stroke compared to the other trees and of course you can see that I applied some some light and shadow there so the other ones are not necessarily they're just more like outline drawings okay of course you know be aware that you know here I basically I really oversimplified this concept just to drive the example of what I mean okay and this is as I said it's something you can apply to a portrait you can apply to a figure drawing you can apply to virtually any subject you draw you can shift your emphasis on the various elements and then determine where the eyes will focus so hopefully um, you guys got some tips from this something you can apply in your own drawing and um, see you in the next tutorial <laughs>